Hey guys, what's playing behind me right now? Well, this is PlayStation 4 Pro footage of Cyberpunk 2077. I know my channel is mostly focused on PC content, and I will talk about how this could relate to some PC stuff that we see. Uh, but let's also, I, you know, this is just a general tech channel, though it is PC focused, so I am interested in the console versions of these games as well. So if we take a look here, uh, this is running on the PlayStation 4 Pro, and um, again, I'll link these videos in my description, because this is my recording of an already released recording, so what you see here might not be, you know, perfect, as, as good as it does look on the on the other version. But look at the shadows here. I just want to just want to point that out. To me, these shadows look a little weird, kind of kind of buggy underneath uh, underneath that. So, um, you know, there's definitely some some downgrading here. Also, when there's movement, notice that it hands the camera very slowly here and even turning very slowly. I can see some frame chop. So to me, this feels like it's at most 30 frames per second. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if big open world driving scenes like this maybe don't even maintain a, an actual stable 30 frames per second on the last gen consoles. Now we're looking at a switch to the PS5 and as it pans, uh, and, and there's movement, it does feel a lot smoother. Now this video itself that they released only goes to 1080p and doesn't say 60 frames per second. So I believe that this is only a, uh, a 30 frames per second recording, but it could be a recording of 60 frames per second footage or gameplay. And I don't know, again, it, this doesn't tell us. There's no, there's no analysis here that we can use, but just looking at it, it does seem to be running a lot smoother. But the other really important thing to notice here is it's saying that this is running via backwards compatibility. And that's something I've been hearing about and I have now absolutely confirmed, which is at launch on the consoles, Cyberpunk does not have a next-gen version of the game. You can play it on the next-gen consoles, but you're not playing the next-gen version of the game. It will run better than on the last-gen versions of the consoles, but it isn't running the actual next-gen version. The next-gen version of the game is actually gonna be released in early 2021. And if you've been watching my channel, you probably saw a video a few days ago where I mentioned that they, uh, CD Projekt Red confirmed that cons that sorry ray tracing on the PC versions won't be running at launch on AMD cards. And we know that the consoles are using AMD graphics. So I'm guessing that if we wanted a time frame for when we're gonna see the ray tracing patch for AMD cards, it's probably gonna be early 2021 when the next gen console updates are released. Now, with that being said, I mean, this looks pretty good. Again, this is 1080p, and I doubt this would correspond with all of the ultra settings on a PC, but the PlayStation 5 does seem to be running it pretty well. And the PS4 Pro was running it in a playable manner. Um, and again, obviously you won't be getting the same graphics as you would from a new gaming PC. Now there's also a video released last week uh, showing Xbox One X and Xbox uh, Series X gameplay. Now these aren't the same scenes, so I'd love to do a comparison saying what I think about the graphics on the different consoles, but since they're not showing the same scene, I don't think that we can really do that. That wouldn't be fair. Now I will say that once again, the One X, like I said with the PS4 Pro, as the camera pans here, even though they're panning slowly, that looks really choppy to me. So I would say this is at most 30 frames per second. Um, and again, it would not surprise me if it dropped below that. So again, this is the One X footage. By the way, I'm not showing you the entire um, footage of these games. You can look at the link in my description uh, to watch the full videos. I'm showing you partway through the last gen consoles and then so that you can see the transition over to the next gen consoles while I'm talking. If I played the full videos, it'd probably be longer than this video. <laughs> anyway, um, so you can see the comparison here. So again, looks pretty good on a One X, um, but like I said, the frame rate doesn't look anywhere near 60 to me, even though this video is only recorded at, six, uh, at 30. Now, here we go with the Series X. Once again, we're seeing a big open driving scene. Also notice that the previous gen console stuff, 
uh, I think also in the PS4 Pro gameplay, seem to be more enclosed areas. We're seeing these big drive, open driving areas more, uh, more on the uh, new console versions. And again, this does look pretty smooth. He's driving around there pretty well. But again, even though this one does not say that it's via backwards compatibility, I am fairly confident that this is also the case. It wouldn't be different on the Series X versus the PS5. They're playing the last gen versions via compatibility with upgrades, I think, to the frame rate since they have the more processing power, maybe to the visuals as well. But like I said, this is not actually going to have the full version of the next gen consoles at launch. So that's what it tells us about the um, uh, the AMD launch as well, like I said, about the ray tracing patch. Now, some people in my comment section, when I talked about the system requirements for the games, here's the transition to 1X now, by the way. Uh, well, back to 1X again, uh, so you can see the comparison. Anyway. Uh, I had a video about Cyberpunk a while ago releasing the system requirements for the PC versions of the game, and there was a big debate there about whether those targets are targeting 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. In the video, it was my first glance at them, and I said I'd probably assume they were 60 frames per second, but I'm gonna actually backtrack on that a little bit, and I'm gonna say that what I think those would be targeting is probably a uh, kind of an in-between, meaning it would probably be minimums around 30, right? Right, like you won't, wouldn't be dropping much below 30. But I also wouldn't say that those on all cases were probably giving you a 60 frames per second solid, like you will never, never dip below it. I would assume for some of those cards in certain scenes, big open world stuff, you'd probably be seeing things dropping a little bit below 60 realistically. I think we could see that. That's my opinion. That is not based on any leaked information that I have or any statements from the developers. Um, but here's, the, here's, here's some reasons why I've reached that conclusion. Number one, lots of people since, like, like I posted that video the second those requirements were released. Now there's been several days, people have asked the developers repeatedly, are these targeting 60 frames per second? And I've checked again recently as of the time of filming, and there has been no response. To me, a no response to that indicates that it's not targeting a solid 60 frames per second, at least in all cases. I think if it was targeting a solid 60 frames per second, they would have said you'd get a solid 60 frames per second they'd have been happy to say that. And they did respond to the bad news on the ray tracing side for AMD. So they are responding to questions, but they chose not to respond to the question about the frame rate issue. That's why I don't think it's a lock 60. That's my main reasoning. The other reasoning is just looking at some of those cards, I'm not sure they'd give you a locked 60 in a title this visually demanding, but CD Projekt Red is a good developer and you know they you know you can run Witcher 3 on some pretty low end stuff with reasonable settings and obviously this game's a lot newer, but you get the idea, you get what I'm saying. Uh, so I'm not saying it's probably a locked 30, but it might not be a locked 60 on those targets in my opinion. Other thoughts on that is also people noticed that AMD graphics cards were paired up a lot lower than the um, uh, relevant uh, NVIDIA cards, meaning normally certain AMD cards have roughly the same performance as certain NVIDIA cards and AMD cards, right? They pair up a certain way. In that system requirements chart, it looks like AMD was placed lower relative to the uh, NVIDIA cards. And one reason that could be the case is DLSS. At least that would explain it for the 20 series cards. We know that Cyberpunk is a DLSS 2.0 title. And uh, some people were asking if those ray tracing uh, system requirements probably required DLSS. And I will say that yes, they do, or at least they, they will for the 2060. And I would assume that would also be the case for the higher end ones. My source for that is if you actually look at the NVIDIA website where it talks about the ray tracing for this game, they specifically mention DLSS on the uh, description of the 2060 ray tracing performance in this game. And so I would, uh, and that is a post on the NVIDIA website where they are referencing that performance chart. So that's the info I have for you guys on that. It didn't state it as clearly for the higher end cards, but I would assume that that would be the case, at least on the ray tracing side, 
And I'm, but again, there's different levels of DLSS. We don't know if you could drop it down to a performance level versus quality and all their different levels uh, where you drop the internal resolution even lower and maybe could get higher frame rates out of it than they're recommending in the chart. My, again, other thought on DLSS is the 20 series cards do support DLSS even, and 30 series cards, obviously, uh, even when you're not doing ray tracing. So on the non-ray tracing side of the chart, that could explain why AMD cards were placing lower relative to their NVIDIA 20 series counterparts. It doesn't explain it for the uh, 10 series or lower NVIDIA cards and their placement against relative AMD cards. So it is also possible that it's not factoring in DLSS and it's just very optimized for NVIDIA right now. We know that um, this is a game that was partnered with NVIDIA. Sorry, my heater's kicking on for background noise. Um, Anyway, we know this is a game partnered for uh, with NVIDIA to do the DLSS 2.0 and the ray tracing and all of that. Um, and uh, CD Projekt has a history of partnering with them, like in The Witcher 3 with their hair works and things like that. And so it would stand a reason that this game could be optimized specifically for NVIDIA and that AMD users will at least at first not get as good of, a, uh, of performance. Uh, compared to their relative NVIDIA counterparts. And that would be disappointing, but it is also something that could be optimized later through patches and things like that. And we also know that these, again, when the console update comes in, that's going to optimize for the new consoles and we'll get the next gen console update on consoles. That optimization is designed around AMD GPUs. So because it's designed around AMD GPUs, it would stand to reason that they could also do a similar patch, the same patch that'll probably um, add ray tracing support, I would imagine would also better optimize the game for the AMD graphics cards. And I do want to be clear again that this is all speculation from me, but it is based on these uh, the reasoning that I'm explaining here. So you can decide for yourself if you feel like it's uh, convincing enough evidence for you. I'm not gonna come down hard and, and say this is exactly the case on any of the stuff I'm telling you right now. I'm just giving you the best information I have. And once again, all the sources will be linked in the description. Okay, I could let this video go on and on to finish up this gameplay footage, but I'm honestly kind of out of things to say other than this game looks awesome and I'm very excited to play it. If you made it to the end of this video, you could consider hitting the like button, maybe subscribing to my channel if you're interested in PC and technology related stuff. And I wanna give a huge thank you to everybody who already has subscribed and watched my videos. I can't believe how fast my channel has grown. I started this up a month and a half ago as just a little hobby and I'm, uh, I'm blown away, guys. Thank you so much, and I hope you have an excellent day.